Father, and from our Lord and risen Savior. Amen. In today's text, we find Jesus returning home. He's going back to the place where he grew up, where everybody knew him. You've heard that old saying, it's an axiom. You can never go home. You know why that is? It's because when you go home, people look at you and they, they all they have is this old history. They've forgotten that life isn't a snapshot, it's a movie. And they're stuck in what you were like when you left. When I was going to be ordained, I asked certain people to do certain parts of the worship service based upon the gifts that they had and how that would work. And so Bruce Miller, my intern supervisor, was, was going to chant the liturgy. Bruce was a fantastic musician as well as a great pastor. And he could, he could knock a, a an A-sharp off the staff through a brick wall, we used to tell him. And then I wanted Walt Wietzke to preach. Walt was a pastor I worked with for two years in downtown St. Paul. Rhonda can tell you what that church was like at St. Mark. An interesting study. And Walt said, sure, I'll do it when? And I told him, July 1st. Ah, Raya and I are going to be back in Finland. His wife was from Helsinki. So I got to think, who should I ask Richard Swanson. Richard was a PhD candidate at Luther Seminary while I was there. His wife took care of Tim when he was a year late. And so he would be good. And Richard was from my home congregation. He left there as an eighth grader when his dad took a job teaching vocational agriculture in Pipestone, Minnesota at the Botech. And so, yeah, he said he'd love to do it. I remember the sermon. I remember the two bags of seeds he held up as he talked about uh, spreading the seed as a pastor. But I also remember the group of older ladies behind us who, when they were flipping through the bulletin, said, Is that little Rick Dickey Swanson? <laughs> I think it is. And through the whole sermon, this little Dickey Swanson, he's got tall. Look <laughs> at his mustache. That's what they were talking about. They remember little Dickie Swanson as an eighth grader, but now they have standing in front of them this guy whose mind is so sharp that when he got to seminary, he could teach Greek and Hebrew and Latin and French and probably German. His mind was that sharp, but they remembered him as little Dickie Swanson. <laughs> and he got up preaching, and it was just little Dickie Swanson. Jesus arrives back in Nazareth. After being gone not too long. Isn't that Joseph's son? What's he doing in the synagogue telling us what's wrong? <laughs> what is God up to today in this text that pricks the ears of the people who hear it and their back gets out of joint? It's simply this little phrase here. Mind you, it's short. He says, the, um... Today, the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. When a Jewish person says that, they're making a claim about themselves in relationship to the word that they just presented. And he's saying to them, and they caught it, that when he says that word, God is working in and through him. Wait a second. He's just the carpenter's son. What does he mean? God is working through him. And Jesus shifts the gears instantly, and he's off and running. Doubtless you will quote this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. And then he reminds them that a prophet is unwelcome in his hometown, and he's making the people not uncomfortable, but angry. Angry beyond anger to the point of becoming mad. Uncontrollable in their response to what is taking place. And Jesus says those words, simply this. Today, the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. What scripture? The scripture that Jesus just read is a recitation of what God is going to do when the Messiah comes and act for his people. And here it is, Jesus saying, I'm the one doing it. The people are angry. And Jesus says, hey, if you're angry now, try this on for size. When Elijah was around, only a Gentile woman was served by the prophet. 
not you people from Israel. Only when Elisha was alive could a leper who was an Assyrian enemy be cleansed. Not you guys. God is about the task of irritating people today. Because he's irritating the people who think they sit with everything. And they want it. And they have forgotten that God's love is poured out richly into everything. They have forgotten that God came to call Israel to be a light unto the nations. Not themselves. Not the nation, but the nation. And God was pouring himself out graciously into everything that he had created. And they didn't like it. And so they went back to the old tapes. That's just Jesus, the son of Joseph. They can hear those old ladies yell. A couple of them I like. And God is speaking. And he's doing when he speaks. And the people aren't going aren't to buy it. Today, as this text is presented to you, as it is God's gift to us, we find out that when God says, come and give my grace to these people, that when we push against God, we want to push them away from the people that God wants to go to, he merely walks past us. To speak to those who need that word. Your task as God's children is to not be the mob moved from anger to madness, to drive Jesus to the precipice of the hill and push him over. Your task is to be called to be as Paul says, not noisy dogs and clanging symbols, but people filled with love, the desire to serve others, the people who are known as the hands of God in a community that's broken and crying out for healing. You are called to be Elijah and Elisha, to reach out to people whose lives are marked by loss and separation and bring them into God's fold. If God's going to love your neighbor, you've got to ring their door. That's what Jesus is talking about. And he is mindful of the difficult task you have when you live in a community long enough to be called a member of it. It's hard to be seen as somebody different. And yet, God sends his love to you that you might send it out to others. And the ending is so beautiful. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. God passed through. He left them. And he went to the people who needed to hear. Your sin is forgiven. Your guilt is removed. He came to you. He bids you to go with him. We have the sign above the door. You are now entering the mission field. God's mission is merely to love you. Your mission is to love your neighbor.